Let me take the moment to show you the import of the song the choir sang to us this morning. There is, there used to be a very strong longing. Most of the Christians of the days past, of the days they are going to see Jesus face to face. And the reason is simple. Paul said, Peter told them, Peter said concerning us, in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, describing our relationship with the Lord Jesus, he said, is somebody whom we have not seen yet you love though now you seem not yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable or inexpressible and full of glory now you have not seen him but you are that excited what will happen when we see him? So, our hope is described in the, trans, in the degrees of our, of our ability to see him. For example, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse, verse 12, describing the experience of a Christian. He said, for now we see in the mirror dimly, but then, there is a now to me, and there is a then again. There is a moment of the see this moment, but this is not the end. It's not just about Sunday service. In fact, the greatest that this service is bringing us is seeing him as in a mirror. But then, face to face, that is going to be the final expression it was what differentiated Moses from every prophet the Bible says if there were prophets among you I speak to them in dreams and vision but Moses my servant is not like that I speak to him face to face like a man speaks to his friend this is what the natural man can comprehend what he's saying is that we'll become friends of God God there will be no mystery Get it. It's easy to to stop every discussion by just saying, you know, God is a mysterious God. When you cannot explain what has happened, well, say God has mysterious way. That's not the way friends talk. Friends say, I know my friend, and I know what is going to do. When somebody say, I know whom I believe, that's and I'm, I I know that whatsoever I've kept in His hand. He will preserve it. That's not just talking about somebody you are v- vaguely acquainted with. That's talking about somebody you are intensely connected to. And it is a privilege. Hallelujah. If this is the sermon, I don't know. let me show you the import of what the choir sang. Because when some of us hear this song, they are not giving you drums. They are speaking the new covenant. That's what they are saying. In the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 5, from verse 23, the Bible began to describe what they were contrasting this song with. It happened in the wilderness of Sinai. So it was when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness god was speaking to israel while the mountain was burning with fire that you came near to me all the heads of your tribes and your elders and you said surely the lord our god has shown on his glory and his greatness and we will have we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire we have seen this day that god speaks with man yet he still lives now therefore why should we die for this great fire will consume us. We love the voice. But we hate the fire. That's why you have not come to a mountain burning with fire. 
which means it's a place where you are made welcome. You don't just love the voice, you love the presence. You see, we love the voice, but this is fire. We consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord God anymore, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh who have had the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and have lived? Yes. You go near and hear all that the Lord our God may say and tell us all the Lord our God says to you and we will hear and do it. Then the Lord had the voice of your words which you spoke to me and the Lord said, I have had the voice of the words of these people which they have spoken. They are right. In that dispensation, God said it was right. But can I bring you good news anymore? It's not right anymore. They were right that time to say, go, speak. Hear God. God said it's right. God said they were right because it is his fear. But if you use that same description with God today, God said you are not right. You don't get it. It used to be the description of piety. But it is now wrong. So in Hebrews chapter 6, the Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, over the house of God. For we do not have an high priest that is not touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He said, let us therefore boldly come. So now, what is right is to boldly come. Then, what was right is to say, God talked to Moses. But if you say it now, God said, you are wrong. Then you know what, I'm just only a God, you know I'm not. God said, you are wrong. You are not nothing. You are God's son. It used to be right, but it's not right anymore. You know, that's why there are some self-imposed righteousness. Some self-imposed um, piety you put on yourself. And they used to be right, but they are wrong now. Because now, to declare less of what, than what God has declared you to be is wrong. I can now see Jesus face to face that is the meaning of the song we had this morning and when we tell him we are not just boasting we are boasting in the lord lift your voice and give him praise you know when you get to some houses they say you are welcome you are welcome does not mean you have entered you are welcome means if you will you can come in but entering means you take the opportunity. Now, a generation that was not welcome feared it. A generation that was welcome despised it. You are welcome, but you must enter. How do we claim that we see God face to face and we don't talk to him? You are welcome, but you have not entered. How do we claim that we are, we, we, you know, we are welcome but we don't even seek his word. You are welcome, but you have not entered. Who is going to enter this morning? So I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercies and in fear of you. We will come into your house in the multitude of your mercies I have come to run into your house. To your holy temple. We have come. With joy, I have come into your house. Your dwelling place, O oh Lord. Your holy 
come to you face to face unveil to behold the beauty of your holiness that was worthy O oh God to receive all the glory and the power you've created all things and for your pleasure we are we are created Spirit of the Lord, thank you for the privilege of the New Testament. You know how you will tell God that you are happy? You will say, Father, I have what it takes to hear you today. I have the capacity to understand you today. That's what is called the New Testament. Say, Father, my ears hear your voice. Say, Father, with delight I see your face. And I shall behold you, Father. And being transformed into the same image from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And you may Hallelujah. Thank God. All right. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The title of our sermon this morning is Competing According to the Rules. I remember sometimes in 2011, is in boat was in the final of the world indoors competition 
and he was disqualified for being for a false start. He had the speed, the capacity. It was all it was almost a done deal that he was the one that was going to win the race. But you know what happened? He was disqualified. Because you will not be crowned unless KJB say except. So if the word unless and except means that this is a very important thing. Violate it and all your capacity, innate abilities will be what? Defeated. That thing you will do that will defeat every grace God has put in your life will not come. In the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, Paul, describing some of the things we have to put ourselves in under to be able to win the race, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the price so run in such a way that you may obtain it and one of the ways to run so that you can obtain is to run according to what the rules yes for everyone who competes for the price is temperate is disciplined in all things and they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one that beats the year, verse 27, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. That's a shocking reality that can face a runner that you can be disqualified. doesn't matter your ability your capacity, when the rules are broken, you are disqualified. Praise the Lord. Sometimes ago, in our house in the morning, we wanted to fry, uh, what do you call it? Bean cake. Akara. We did the Put the beans in water, soak it, put it in the what do you call it? Blender. And by the time it came out, I already knew we had failed. And when we put it in the oil, it was just spreading. If you want to grind beans for bean cake. There is a way it's grounded. And if you want to grind it for more, more, there's a way. You will say, well, it's grounded beans. It's not just grounded beans. It's not just running. It's not just competing. It's competing according to the rules because when the rules are broken, when the process is tampered with the proceed will not come out where are, you, are we together that's why it's so important in our life that our processes be told in isaiah chapter 28 from verse 23 to 29 isaiah 28 from verse 23 to 29 it said give ear and and hear my voice listening and hear my speech does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? When you want to sow on the ground, you break the ground. But as I was studying agriculture, they told me that the more you break the ground after some time, you are leaving it susceptible to erosion. So, there is a level of breaking of the ground that you must do that if you go beyond that level, you are actually what? Making the vulnerable. Are you following me? 
So even if you are applying the land, after applying it, you must apply it to a certain degree. Or else, what you are trying to do, you, will, you, are, you actually find yourself defeating your own purpose. So the plowman does not plow all day to sow. Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? When he has leveled the surface, he's beginning to tell us so many things he, he does. He's plowing, he's timed, it's not permanently. He turns the soil, he breaks the clods, he levels the surface, he sows the black cumin. The black cumin is a type of seed. The way you plant maize is not the way you plant yam. When you plant yam, you need stalks. How many of you have planted tomato in your house before? Did you open the ground? What did you do? Eh? You just took the seedlings and uh, looked for somewhere that was watered and you threw it there. And what happened? When you get to take yam, do it like that. What will happen? Your goat will take it. Because the process for the two are not the same. The, if you want black cumin, you sow it. But there is another one thing he called the cumin. This is another seed. You scatter it. You scatter the cumin. You plant the wheat in rows. And the barley in what? In appointed place. And the spelt in its place. There are things that you must get a place for to plant. Then there are things that you just scatter and they grow. And I will follow it. So for he instructs him in right judgment. My prayer for you is that God will instruct you. Instruct him and his God teaches him. Look at the process. Even when you have the harvest. Black cumin is not threshed with a threshing sledge. Now, how many people have been into farming here? I need you this morning. Have you ever seen where they were processing harvested rice before? How do they do it? There is a way they beat it. You beat rice so that you can remove the, the sharp. So that you can have the grain. So when you now harvest your tomato and you need the... Can you carry... If you use what you use to get the grain of rice for tomato, what will happen? Your harvest is destroyed. Black cumin is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor a cat will roll over cumin. But black cumin is beaten out with a stick. And cumin with a rod, a rod is different from a stick. Where you should use stick, if you use rod, you waste your effort. A man who competes will never be crowned except he competes according to the rules. There are rules and divine patterns that govern your expectation. And you must trust God that your life is built according to those rules. Are we together? Bread flour must be ground. You don't trash it forever. Break it with cartwheel or crush it with us with his horsemen. This comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. There are so many things that are similar, but they have their differences. And God must help us to have an understanding of it. In Judges chapter 6, verse 11. The Bible said an angel of the Lord met Gideon who was threshing wheat in a wine press. You thresh wheat in a threshing floor and press wine in a wine press. They have instruments that are designed to optimize those harvests in different ways. 
But he had to do it because he was hiding from the Midianites. Which means he will get some harvest, but there was a degree of loss he will suffer. But he will prefer to just have something that have nothing. Are you following me? Because you should press which in the threshing floor and press one. Because when you want to press one, you, you, don't, you just break the graves. What you need is what flows out. to take away the child. They are not the same process. And many times people mix everything together. You take your harvest that should be in the threshing floor and take it to a wine bread and you get something but you are not competing according to the rules. Most Christians can't get the fullness of what it means to see God face to face. Because you know why? It's not a mouth thing. Seeing God face to face is more than confession. It's a pursuit. There is a challenge God has always had with man. And the challenge has been less of what people say. It has been more of what is in the heart of people. In Matthew 20, in, in, in Isaiah, I beg your pardon, chapter 29, verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13. My message is very simple. You'll get it. And the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips. How many of you love Jesus here? People got confused. How many of you love Jesus here? He will help you. The easiest thing to do in church is to tell him how much we love him. Mm, father in heaven. How many of you know you have a father in heaven? Why do you feel like you are an orphan? Why do you sit there at home and say, nobody is thinking of me? But you say, mm, Father in heaven, how I love you. I lift your name in all the... I'm not troubled about what Donald Trump is saying. Your name is praised in all the earth. It doesn't matter whether the president of my country is a Muslim or the president of my country is a Buddhist. I lift your name in all the earth. Is that not what we say? How many of your times have your praise been hindered by what is happening on the earth? But I thought you said, I lift your name. Let your kingdom be established in my praise. As your people, we declare your mighty works. Blessed be the Lord. I mean, if all devotion is songs, the kingdom would have, we would have left the flesh. Mm, father to son, spirit to spirit. I heard you singing it. I know when Kike is leading, I know the type of song. Kike is spirit, it cannot be flesh. God will preserve your voice. In as much as these people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but they have removed their hearts from towards me is taught by the commandment of man jesus said it you know quoted that word in matthew 15 verse 8 in matthew 15 verse 8 he told us the people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their leaves but their heart and what powers the mouth is the heart Immediately the heart is taken away from the mouth, it has become idle talk and empty speech. You are competing, but you have broken the rules that govern utterance. Showed you last Sunday that utterance, our words like are like arrows. And what governs utterance is the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart is what the mouth speaks. So there must be 
at least twice the capacity of what you are uttering in your heart per time. You didn't get what I just said there. There must be at least twice the capacity of what you are uttering with your mouth in your heart. So that you might be able to say like Paul, even if our outward man is perishing, our inward man is renewed day by day. Glory to God. We can even get to an acceptable worship that does not even have speech to describe. It's called groanings which cannot be uttered. That means our heart is so pregnant that even our mouth can't catch up with it. I don't know whether you get that. That's, that's the spirit that governs it. And in Matthew 7 verse 21 to 29, Jesus began to speak to us about people who add his word. Another thing that governs, the law that governs hearing the word is not hearing. The word that governs speaking is what the art, what is in your art. The law that governs hearing is doing. If you hear without doing, you have made void what you have had. So Jesus said, those that hear my word and do it, I will liken them to a man who built his house upon the rock. He said, look at Matthew 7, 21. It's not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, that will enter the kingdom, but he who what? Does the will of my Father in heaven. Yes? And some will say that the Lord, Lord, that we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done wonders in your name. I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you will practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who has built his house. Jesus says, it's not everybody that is saying, Lord, Lord. There is a law that governs utterance. When it is not from the heart, when it is not attached to doing, with a decision to do, it is empty. Are you following me? Faith can be dead. Faith without works is dead. Faith is powerful. Faith can subdue kingdoms, but faith can be dead. Important. Because the law that governs it is not applied to it. Are you following me? When you compete in a race, you are actually on the thread of winning. But yet, you can be disqualified when you do not compete according to the rule. The rule of hearing the word is doing the word. That's when your house is like built on the rock. When you hear the word and you don't do it, Jesus said it's like a man that built his house upon the sand. And when the rain came and the storms came, it fell. It would look like he never had the word. It would look like he never came to church. Are we together? But I'm praying for you that when the storms come, the storm will discover that you have substance inside of you. And you know how the storm will discover? Because you are not just a hearer. The scripture told us in the book of James that those who are hearers without being doers of the word of God, that they are deceiving themselves. They have broken the rule of that competition. I don't know whether you get my thought. In, Matthew, in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 18, Proverbs 17, verse 18, Glory to God. Let me. I think I'm making up something here. Proverbs. Sixteen. I beg your pardon. Proverbs seventeen, verse sixteen. Why? This is a question. Why is there in the hand of a fool the purchase price of wisdom? What does a fool need? Talk to me. Wisdom. Then he now asks what? The purchase price. How many of you are afraid when there is money in your hand and a need, and need shows up? You just hear your wife is cooking and he said, the gas has finished. And there is money. You, say, well, 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 you should have told me. Now. When did you notice that? Okay, put it in the boots. It's no problem when there's a purchase, when the purchasing power is in your hand. 
a need or a void is no problem when you have a purchasing power, but when you don't have, you just hear the guys are saying, How did you? When I told you people, that's when you'll be using water, you just boil water, three, three minutes, boil water. All the men know what I'm talking about. We have experienced the two. I was purchasing about you yourself. Say, Can we even feel the second, the second cylinder? Let's just feel it. Just put it there. It's because there's purchasing power. When there's no purchasing power, is there? Ah, this one must last one and a half months. Please, anything you want to do, ever, I, please don't talk to me about gas until then. <laughs> it's what I've done. That's why I can. I'm an IP, I can relate. Why is there in the hand of a fool the purchase price of wisdom? Since he has no art for it. Now, purchasing power is not everything. There are people who are rich whose families are suffering. They have the money, but they don't have the heart. There are people people call they are good outside and bad at home. But they are now. If you see that person's child and the child is hungry, it is not the lack of purchasing power, it is what the lack of the earth. What governs need is the power of purchase, but what directs what you purchase is your heart. When you go to a supermarket. Everything is calling for your attention, including what we never need. So I'm here. Process on. Right from Colombia. As if the bee in Colombia is even from the one in Africa. Some of you will just say, let me taste this string that and today go on. It's the loss of your heart that is directing the power of purchase that is in your heart. The law that governs need is that need has the power of purchase that can handle it. But what governs the power of purchase is what? Is what is in your heart. There are some of you that are compulsive buyers. green You will not die. Have you noticed that you are still okay even when you didn't buy it? If you enter the place and come out, you won't die. If you decide it is next month, I will buy it. You won't die. You will buy it. You will because you will live for another 60 years. You have all the time to buy it. Don't, don't go and fight on something that can wait till next week. Wives, say amen. When I was judging the men, you were all shouting, Wives, say amen like thunder. Amen. Some things can wait. You won't die. In James 2, verse 14 to 26, he began to speak to us about the corresponding actions of faith. I'm going to come to the story of Jehu to tie this thing to, together for us. He said, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith? Who has faith here? Is there somebody here that believes that no matter how hard it is in this country, God will make a way for you? He will make a way. Faith is an exceptional quality. Who, what does it profit my brethren if someone says? Now the problem is that most people that think they have faith only say. But the law of faith is not just what you say. It's what is within you. If you will say to this mountain without doubting in your heart. Be ye removed and be cast into the sea. You will have what you say. But it's not about what you say as much as about what is within you. Who has faith here? You have faith and because you have not conceived in two months, in seven months, you have lost your faith. Peace. Oh, the Lord, no faith. I thought you would read Abraham's story with delight. That's all I'll be reading, sir, without fear. Why was Abraham just... Why did he take Ishmael now? Just stay. When God has spoken, 
The question I want to ask some of you is, how many times have God spoken to you? Who has had God before? That you know this word is from God. <laughs> People are very afraid now. If you have never had it before, something's wrong. Who, you know this one. Whether it's from the Bible or anything, he jumped at you. You know this is the word of God. Since you had it, how many of you have had the second thought? So, anytime you are reading Abraham, you should be fellowshipping with him. He's your near kinsman. <laughs> because many a times, faith will push you to a point where you will know that it is not just a mental disposition. It must go beyond a mental disposition into the depths of your spirit. It will, it will work upon your attitudes. If you say you have faith but does not have what can faith save him? Look at what he said. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to him, Depart in peace, be warm, be feel, feel. And do not give him the things which are needed for the body. What does he profit? Does also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is what? Is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. When you need to push faith from just what you say to what you show, what you live out, you will have to get out of the realm of even what you say. You will, there's a way you will live that. You it will be reflected to you clearly that you are believing God. You can't tell me you are believing God. And every five, five minutes, you are, you know, it's like somebody that plants a seed. You plant maize. Then every three, three minutes, you go and check it. Is it growing? It will die. If you have faith, when you praise Him, get up from that your thoughts and that your anxiety. Get up from that your need and give somebody something. You entered prayer room as a needy. You came out of the place as a giver. That's fit. You didn't hear what I just said. <laughs> That's some stuff. He said, Father Lord, I don't know, you know what I'm saying. God said, I said, I'm taking care of it. Then you look at even what remains. He said, Since he, he has taken care of it, even this one, I can still bless others. That's, that's what it means to be in faith. You believe that there is one God. How many of you believe? You do well. Even demons believe. I must go beyond the realm of demons. Even demons know there is God. They believe and tremble. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Yes. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? If Abraham said, I'm a man of faith, and God said, take Isaac and say, God, Lord. Father, Lord, I cannot. He's not in faith. I thought he believed that Isaac came from God. How many of you believe that what you have came from God? Why is it a debate when you want to give to God? Why are you always thinking? Why are you, do you have to see that? She rolling, boom, boom, boom. Somebody has to see that and calculate everything. I thought you said God gave it to you. Most of the times, you are just trying to be pious when you say, God gave me this job. You know that you gave, you got, you got the job by yourself. Because if God gave you, you will give it. The Bible told us in Hebrews that the, when Abraham offered Isaac on the altar, it was because he had first received him from the dead. His body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. So, death was no strengthening to his mind anymore. Neither was resurrection. Because suddenly, Sarah's womb at 90 began to kick. That's resurrection power. So he knew that even on the altar, God still has power. The cycle of death and resurrection became normal to Abraham. You don't get it. That was why when he saw the day of the Son of God, he rejoiced. When the disciples were, were, were ashamed that, that what? That Jesus was being, was being crucified. Abraham was rejoicing because the cycle of death and resurrection had become normal. 
you didn't get it. May God help you to a point where certain things that are so straight to remain are normal. Are you following? Faith was working together with works and works. By works, faith was made perfect. Yes? And the scripture was fulfilled. We said Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then that by a man, that a man is justified by works, not only by faith. Praise the Lord. May God give you the corresponding grace to compete according to rule for what you are expecting. There are churches that say, ah, we are leaving this. Our next anniversary will not be here. How many of you believe it? You are only talking. I say our next anniversary is not here. Yeah. Say faith trust place. It's a reality. I'm seeing dead faith here. Because some of you that just talk, immediately you go get out of that door. Faith rest place is just an idea. Be no tea bad, you know. I said, yeah, sure do it. I said, we are not having our next anniversary here. I'm pulling you out of your doubt to faith. Now, when you now have faith, what happens? You have what? Work. So, if you tell me you believe, the question I want to ask you is that, what have you done about it? What in Wolem? We are not having our next anniversary here. We, God is make, giving us room in the land. Say room in the land. Say room in the land. You believe it. And I'm not going to alone that. I'm not going inside the forest. I'm sorry. I'm here in the land. Do you believe it? I can stop this. Area and say, if you don't believe Let's divide the service. You can be going home. I want to see the people who believe. Because the people who believe will do something. They will do everything. And there is something that is a law of corresponding action in your life to that faith. That must be done. This morning we read the story of a man called Jehu. In 2 Kings chapter 9. Elisha called one of the sons of the prophet and gave him a box of oil. And he told him to go to a place called Ramad Gilead. He said, when you get there, you are going to see Jehu. And you are going to tell him to rise up from the midst of his associates. You take him into an inner room. He's a captain. He's seated in the midst of captain. He said, when you get there, you will open the box and point on his head. And tell him, just say the Lord, I've ordained you to be the king of Israel. I've not just ordained you to be king of Israel, I've ordained you to bring judgment on the house of Ahab. Now, that was almost, almost a wrong place to be anointed. He was going to be anointed for a rebellion against his master in the midst of the servant of his master. What a place for God to anoint you. When God puts you in the midst of conflict, He's developing your muscles. Most people would have wanted God to anoint them where no man knows. They let God fulfill it. And the prophet called him and took him to that inner room and anointed him. And when he came down, and when they pour oil on you, especially a box of oil, you can't hide that something is not there. So they told, they, they, what did this madman tell you? He said, nothing. He said, you are lying. Uh, not uh, you are dripping with oil. He now said, you know what he said? Is that God has anointed me to be king over Israel. And what was the response of the people? And each man hastened to take his garment and they put it on the top of the step and they blew the trumpet and said, Jehu is king. That was a shock. Now, this declaration was a declaration of war. Do you know why? Because there was another king. 
And Job must have been looking. Am I seeing a dream? The captains of my king are moving their garments, putting it under. They've gone on a step and blew a trumpet and said, Jehu is king. Then in verse 15, but Joram had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which his Syrians have inflicted on him. Jehu said, if you are so minded, I saw all the gymnastics. I saw the way you are blowing the trumpet. I saw the way you are moving the garments. I was shocked. I need to put to test this your proclamation. If you are so minded, let no one leave or escape from the city to go to hotel it in Israel. This will be the test of your transition. This will be the test that you are, you are on my side. Are you following me? There is always a test for your confession. So that your faith will not be void. And the captains did it. And they began to ride behind him to go and execute the judgment upon the house of air. So much that when he struck him, he struck the son of air in verse 25, Jehu said to Bitka, his captain, they used to be colleagues. Are you following? But he has submitted. There are people that say they have pastor. With words. There's a word that there's a law that governs pastor. That law is being vulnerable and being willing to obey. This man looked at Bitka. He said. In verse 25, his captain, throw him to the tract of the field of Nabot the Jezreelite. For remember, when you and I were riding, we were together riding. But God, by the anointing, took me. And Bitka did not say, There are most of you that say, Neo. Some of you, when you get to a church, the first thing you investigate is the age of the pastor to check whether I can talk to you. Do you like a lot? These are the things that are in the book. Some of you are trapped in the flesh, movements of God in the spirit. And when you cannot, when you are not old enough, you say, How much is he handy? What we are doing in our office is about uh, every month the impress that flows is about five million. Only ye pastor, you know what you have done? You have disconnected it. You are claiming Bitka was willing to prove that the trumpet we blew, the garments we moved, were not religious activities. They were actually activities of faith. Who is here today? Who is willing to show to God that you believe him? One of the signs of believing is that you will obey his prophet. We are getting to a point in the Pentecostal church, especially in the place like Petrus Assembly, where because we are taught, I have a guy here, occasionally I've told him to do something that he would think. I remember one day, his wife was to have an, a, a procedure. And I told him when he's coming, I said, when you are coming, bring an anchor chief. He did not buy it. Because he's overthought. Rev, take point. I told him, I said, something is wrong with you. I said, did I tell you yesterday to go and bring an anchor chief? Did I have an anchor chief transforming service for you? I said, bring Are you ready to hear me? Are you ready? If you are ready, say I'm ready. ready. 
there were practices of faith that we thought were folly that some of our fathers had. So much that, for example, in, their, in the days of the church, when the church was not here, if you went to an, an Orthodox church before, you will see of what they call harvest. When our fathers were farmers, when they harvest in their farm, the first place they take the first produce to was church. Some of them we call their priests. They want to plan to come and bless our farm. Today, some of you say, they are praised. Okay. Some of you say, some of you say, Pastor, I'm even calling, I'm, I'm coming to take you to the land. And it will take you three years. I'm, I, you know what about me? I will not call for you. I will know some people have suffered for what they never needed to have suffered. Because we were trying to prove who we were not. God intelligently chose who is pastoring. You know. It's not because it's better. It's because God said, I give him to you as a gift. I have had reasons to have disagreements with my mentors, but I have something I have made sure that never happened. I will never destroy a relationship God built. That's how he said, that the way pastor spoke to me, you walk away. No, you see, no problem. When you are receiving pain, I will be here like Abel. Cain and Abel. You know what I'm talking about? Speaking better things for you. Not for my blood, but with my mouth. Because arrows. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you think they are obsolete? I can tell you how many people despise marriage cancer. Everything you despise, you are coming back for it. It's a carryover call. <laughs> You see, one of the greatest illusions I've seen with men is that women are simple. They are deceiving you. They want to marry. They want misses in front of their name. I see guys that is a boobie. Just tell us that. Ah! Oh, the vengeance. I'm warning you now. The woman you have not led to church will not fear God. The only place you are leading at is Tantaliza. Bite more. He will bite you more. <laughs> I'm talking about corresponding faith. You say you want to love God. You want to build a house for God. Yo, the lady you are dating. He's always buying clothes every three, three minutes. But it doesn't mean agree. You have a job. You need counseling. But some of when you just get to the house, I just said, I don't buy clothes. Uh-uh. Something she has been doing for 30, 30 years. You just want to decree. Who, who bought you? <laughs> you are not recrafting it. The same way all of you ladies who want to transform them to saints. He's close to the kingdom. He doesn't just come to church often. When I can, I'll just, you are, you are the disciple. <laughs> the pastor of that guy has been preaching for 10 years. The guy has moved one step. You now think because of emotions, it will transform. You will bear the, carry the consequence. That's by the way. God chose the places where you are. There are things you will never see except by the power of oversight. Say amen like thunder. Amen. Let me say what I want to say. Let me keep quiet. But that was not the end. I want to show, I will show you so many places where Jehu 
didn't take the words of men just for words. In verse 30 of that same story, Jehu was going to bring judgment on Jezebel. When Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel out of it, she put a paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through a window. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is, is it peace? Zimri, mother of your master. That's a whole story. And he looked at the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Who is on the Lord's side? So two or three units look out. If the question is who, you can look at people. But we have to prove whether you are on the side. Look at what he said. And he said, throw her down. They were beside this queen before. And when they said, who is on my side? They looked, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. They said, I don't take words for allegiance. I take action. Because if a man does not compete according to rules, he's disqualified. If you truly are on my side, throw her down. So they carried her. The woman said, Ah! Jamil! It is me! Jamil said, I've changed allegiance. Do you know why I changed friends? I changed allegiance. Do you know why you can't find me in some place that was comfortable before? Because when the Lord asked me, who is on my side? I lifted my hands and I said, I'm on his side. And he said, move away from that person. And to prove that I've had him, I moved. Don't tell me you are moving. And you are so comfortable with who Jesus is not comfortable with. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of air. You are not competing according to the rules. That's not the end. In chapter 10, verse 1, he about 70 sons. 70 sons. Jehu wrote a letter to them. He said, fight for the household of your father. Is this the way you will see your father's lineage destroyed? I kill your father. Jezebel is gone. Take one of your 70 sons. Make him king. Strengthen him. Gather an army. Come and fight. Fight. And when the elders received the letter, they said, mm -hmm. verse 4, look, two kings could not stand up to him. Because when Jehu was executing the judgment, he was actually sent to execute the king of Israel. But at the point he was executing, the, the, the king of Judah was visiting May you not visit in the wrong time. And so, he, the judgment, and God, there, there's a word God spoke to me about that. This morning. God, there are some of you God will touch in what you know that will resonate in what you yet, you do not yet know. Listen. When God heals you this morning, concerning an affliction that you, are, you can relate with, by the time you will discover later, you discover God that not just healed you concerning what you know now, He has healed you concerning what is real, but that you don't yet know. So this morning, God is going to move in the realm of that which is in your mind, and in the realm of that which you have not even comprehended. The arrow will go through the realm of that which is understood, and even go far into the realm of that which is yet to be discovered. It will just not minister to this moment. It will minister to the future. Amen. Whatsoever is in your body today that will attack you now and attack you tomorrow, I command it to dry up. Amen. You are not the one that will say, oh yes, you came, we came too late to discover you had this cancer cell. No! No! In the name of Jesus. As the Lord is touching you in the, in the known area, He's touching you even in the unknown dimension. What no doctor has seen, what nobody has prescribed, that is yet in your body now, the almighty, all-knowing God, let His mighty hand rest upon you there. In your muscles, in your muscles, in your knee, in your body, every muscle, Muscles passing in the name of Jesus 
be healed now be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ every breathing problem that the enemy has planted in your body every tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted I uproot it now breathe well breathe well it is not a trouble for today neither will it become a trouble tomorrow the Lord has judged what you know and he has judged what you don't yet know the hand of the most high God is upon you in Jesus mighty name hallelujah praise the Lord let me let me let me conclude so they told him that two kings could not stand up to him how can we stand so what did they say he was in charge of the house he was in charge of the city and those who read the son said we are your servants we will do all you tell us but we will not make anyone good king do what is good in your sight look at what james said then he wrote a second letter to them and said if you have for me are you seeing the word the first people that followed him he told the captains if you are so minded let no one go out when he got to jezebel he said who is on my side when he got to these people and they said we have pledged allegiance they said if you are for me and you will obey my voice take the heads of the men the master son come to me at jezebel by this time tomorrow the king's sons were 70 persons they were with the great men of the city who were rearing them training them so they took the king's son and slaughtered them and put their 70 heads in the basket James said, I received your letter of allegiance, but I must prove it. If truly you are for me, cut the head. Are we together? They did that. When you get to verse 12, He arose and departed and went to Samaria. On the way at Beth Eked of the shepherds, he bear with the brothers of Isaiah, king of Judah, and said to them, Who are you? And they answered, We are the brothers of Isaiah. We have come down to greet the sons of the king and the sons of the queen mother. And he said to them, Take them alive. There's no way you are too angry. You might hate them. But Jehu's instruction is, Take them alive. And you are, if you are for him, it's what he says that you do. And they took them alive. Then he killed them at the well of Beth Eged, 42 men, and he left none of them. When he said, take them alive, they took them alive. When he said, kill them, what did they do? Those people that were following him look like robots. Now, let me tell you something. The easiest life to live is to become a robot in God's hand. Whatsoever he tells you to do, It takes a lot. When I listen to Pastor Debe, Pastor Debe has one secret. Can I tell you a secret? I have followed him for 24 years. It's not fasting. This Pastor Debe is secret. If thou shalt diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's the secret. He believes anything God tells him to say, to do that's why that's why occasionally he does some things that some of you don't understand. If he comes to a meeting and he says, God said, wave your hand, he waves his hand. But he won't go to the next meeting and say, You know, the last meeting I went, I waved my hand. Seven people rose up. Then I have a hand waving ministry. Because your instructions can change in one second. The last minute it was take them. The next minute. Is killed them. And the people who are following were willing enough to make transitions as if the world was proceeding. Ah, our generation needs a heart of obedience. Are we together? We need a heart of obedience. It took them alive. And kill them. Verse 15 said, Now when he departed from there, he met 
Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to him. And he greeted him and said, Is your heart right with me? Do you discover that Jehu's statements are always statements of proving people? If you are so minded, if you are on my side, if your heart is right with me, if your heart is right with me, as my heart is towards you, and Jonadab said, it is. Jehu said, if it is, give me your hand. Don't give me your hand when you have not given me your heart. Did you hear what I just said there? Let's say, don't do like this. Because you want to put a ring on Instagram. Is your heart right with me? Is that your heart right? If your heart is right, you will prove it by what? Giving me your hand. Don't come to a church and say, my heart is with this church. And when there is a time to labor, when the hands are to get dirty, you know, thank God for our church. It's now a very organized church. I know churches those days where people used to go and cut the grass of the church. And your career drew after service, you have to live let the women i see today we want to have weddings if i try it here and i say eh, our sisters will help us cook all of you will be angry can't you think ah, we are that's how we, we do and that is why we don't have communal lives anymore we want to pay for everything your brother wants to marry you want to make it a business in Kanye, when you come to photo, I have nice suit, nice tie. Come on, who are you sell it for three five for other people? Then you come and say seven thousand is that? What type of brethren are we? I'm telling you a crisis that we have. We have turned each other to businesses. It's not right. Can your hands get dirty for me? If your heart is with me, give me your hand. How will you tell me your heart is with me? They tell, you have never found one activity group in church and your heart is with me. When your heart tired at the school of ministry, you went seven miles away. Now some of you here, you call nobody, you look for nobody, you travel at will, you are as independent, as loose as you want to be. Then when I say, which church are you attending? I'm a member of the Faithless Assembly. God does not know. I do not know. Because if God asks me, I say, Oma oh, Anwa. And you know that he will. Every letter in the book of Revelation written to the churches was written to the angel. The word angel is the messenger, the pastor, to the pastor of the church in Ephesus. Uh, where is light? No, I said, ah. Hello, I'm to see. It's been three weeks old. Where is she? Uh, we call. She does not pick. She shows up where she wants to show up. She goes where she wants to go. I said, okay, I record it. Your pastor said, now you are laughing, I'm telling you seriously. If God asks you, you about you from me, what will I say? Because the Bible says I must give account for your soul. The Bible says I must do it with joy. He said, if I do it with grief, it is unprofitable for you, not for me. Because if I'm saying, uh, God will say, hey. okay. I'm telling you the Bible. I'm teaching you the scripture. I'm telling you the truth. I said, oh God, this one is, it does not even think. This one. He doesn't know whether somebody is dying. Ring your hand, of course, yeah. Then we have work to do. You have to preach this sermon next Sunday. He's not getting it. But you have to let go. 
Because we talk. Occasionally, it brings you to me in dreams. And then, so, what is happening to me? So, when some of you see me, I just speak for and then, where are you? It's a dealing. I knew somebody I called during the week. I didn't need to tell her. I knew his business was down. So I called her and I said, uh, I just told him, I said, I've been calling you since yesterday. What's wrong with your business? He said, ah, Pastor, <laughs> half of my boss died. I said, I know. He did not need to tell me. Because you don't understand that this is a spiritual house. Because I'm beginning, I'm beginning to even see it on his face. I'm beginning to see it even the way he's relating with his wife. And I think, come. There's a way some of you when, you, when I see the way you are talking to your wife in church, I know something's wrong. I know there's no money. And the lady is telling you, I want you not to put money in that investment. You did not hear. And you are saying, is this the time to be complaining about wanting me? I don't know what I'm talking about. Then you come to church to listen to the same sound. Everybody, and when I make a point that looks like yours, and you look at the young boy. <laughs> And when I make a point, I do like, well, not my butt here. Yeah. <laughs> it if you are for me, give me your hand. And 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 Jonah said, see, so he said, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand and he took him up into his chariot. And what happened? He said, Come with me. If you are for me, you will go with me. It's not the day I say. Evangelism. We have crusade. That's the day you remember your own ministries to the urban area. Because I just didn't just say we are going to or not there. Because we are planning the crusade for one, one village. How many of you are for? How many of you are for me to the level that when I take us out of this comfort, out of this fan, out of this red chair? To one St. Andrew's Church, Butaku. And I said, Lift up your. How many of you will go with me? That's what I came out. So when, me, when I said, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me, don't be angry. Because my sheep will not just follow me to the pen, they will follow me to the wilderness. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. They, and so they had him ride in his chariot. That's not the end. Are you still there? Then Jill began to describe a very controversial plan. Let me tell you one of the things that proved you are with somebody. It's in the days of controversies. Controversies will come. There is a point coming. Somebody will tell you, Pastor Tim, change. Are you following me? They will tell you. Jehu began to describe a controversial plan. That's it. Jehu said, Jehu was raised to judge the house of Ahab. That's it. Because they were serving Baal. Then Jehu himself now said, He have served Baal a little. Jehu will serve him much. That is the day some people would think they are your friend. A friend sticks at all times. If you cannot ride with me in the days of controversy, most people would think they are Christian. Immediately the controversies of the church came. What happened to them? They rejoice in Pentecostalism until people say, see how your pastors they are buying jet. Me, me, my own Christianity. Do you know what they started doing? Controversies are coming. You think I will not be rich? Do you talk? I will be very rich. And some tabloid will talk. Cobra pastor. Well, I don't know, Jerry. I don't. I'm not. Let, let me tell you the truth. I'm, those things don't fancy. Me. But if you are making impact, you will make controversies. 
The day is going to come that the way I judge government on this movie, when I do it, it will go national. As all of you say, I want to also pastor come on my sorrow or more. He for you. Pastor is always fighting. I was in the school of ministry yesterday after the Paul called me there. Hmm? A quick jack. Last night, one of my friends was having a conference. And he decided to be. And some of the people that were following him online, anytime he says something, they say, Rev. Then he started saying some controversial things. He started judging some. He said he didn't know that the day was going to come when people that were accept him as a prophet of God will believe that T.B. Joshua, too, is a prophet of God. Then the comments changed. He was there. Ah, stay your grace. Stay your grace. Hmm? Why are you judging another person's work? The scripture that says judge not is the same scripture that said Alexander the copper smith did me much evil. Paul wrote people's name in his epistle. He didn't write it. It's because that if that person is your uncle, if Alexander the Coppersmith was your uncle and Paul wrote a letter that they will be reading 6,000 years after, Alexander the Coppersmith did me much evil. Uh, may the Lord repay. Immanence and flitters, when they come, don't receive them because they have overthrown the faith of people. How many of you will like that letter? It's like I write letters, eh? Kiketi uh, Shiamoko. She must not sink for the next two weeks. And the blood memo become leaked memo between and I wrote it to Agakori, Agakori, the quality that it leaked. If you are not careful, Kike will not come to church. He has a heart. Not to see it. Because Alexander the Compass with Dini it was a letter written to a pastor, Timothy. It was a leaked memo. The reason why you know today is because the letter was leaked. It was leaked by being canonized in scriptures. Hello, you say it spoke behind me. Let me ask you a question. Who here has not spoken behind the person before? Hello, you that God has always had a crisis that people say things with the amount that their heart is not there. You are my father. Some of you claim here, you say you are my father, and I've heard that you are going to three different men of God in the last three months that you have tried to go and submit your ministry to them. And you know, this world is small. They discovered you with me. Then they called, ah, share more mind. <laughs> oh, more. He eh? did not mention it. I said, eh? He won't mention. He's trying, to, he's trying to burn the bridges of the past. God is not a man. There is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. But that's by the way, I'm not focused on now. Now, I'm using this as a type and shadow for myself, much more for the Lord. Jehu said, I will serve Baal much. He called all the prophets of Baal, all his servants. He told them not any one of them should be missing. He said, whoever is missing will not leave. It used to be whoever is serving bar will not leave. But now it became whoever is not serving bar. The Bible said, Jehu acted deceptively. That means until that moment, nobody knew what was in the heart of Jehu. Do you have enough capacity to trust a man if he's operating in a way that is not conventional to what you have always seen him do? If I begin to talk about faith and space is a reality, don't think I, I need money. You know, I've not spoken about money for a long time. But I have discovered that some of you have dead faith. Soon, I will call all of you and say, how much are you giving before December? I, will, I can't even do it in this hand. How many of you believe faith and space is a reality? Do you talk? Before COVID, I've been telling you, I've never seen you. 
I've not seen your have I seen your interaction on the fitness place. Very, very recent. How recent? How weighty? If you want to buy block, how much will you use? I hope the money you send can buy at least 500 block. If it's not there, oh, give up. <laughs> but it's true. Because, you see, one of the easiest places to deceive oneself is in worship of God. It's called self-deception. Oh, Father Lord, you are the greatest. You are the highest. There's nothing you cannot do. You can change the world. I give you everything. All my life. My yesterday. My today. My tomorrow. I don't even want everything. I want your salary. Ah! That was what happened to the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, Lord, what will I do to have eternal life? Jesus said, that's no problem. You know the law. Honor your father. Honor the... He said, I've done that for my youth. I need business. Jesus said, ah. The Bible said that Jesus loved him. The man was, because it was not like, Jesus said, you only lack one thing. Just one thing. And when you hear you only lack one thing, that's, that's more. Until you know the weight of the one thing. One thing. What is the one thing? Sell all you have. Give to the poor. Now you can sell all you have and keep it in a trust. That might be hard, easier to handle. Because you can recover your... You can sell all you have and give it to your rich friend. That might be easier to handle because... That when you have need... But sell all you have and give it to the poor. It's a very hard thing. Because the poor will just receive it and say, Thank you all. If you come back five minutes after to ask for it, it's gone. There are some people you don't give money to. If you by mistake give them money, next to money, say, Ah, it was a child. 100,000. Ah. <laughs> oh, bank on there. <laughs> That's not the people don't give it to. The man knows that it's not recoverable. Jesus said, Leave it and follow me. The Bible says, You went home sorrowful. Some of you, some of your mood will change when I change some sermons now. How many of you will be very excited? Say, faith trust plays a reality. I'm checking your mood. I want to see the rich young ruler that is looking very sorrowful this morning. All right. Let's just do this. Let's, let's, let's just be sharing the kingdom. Jehu acted deceptively with the intent of destroying the worshippers of Baal. Yes. Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. They proclaimed it. Jehu sent throughout all, the, all Israel, all the worshippers of Baal, and there, there was not a man left who did not come. So they came into the temple of Baal. The temple of Baal was full from one end to the other. He said to one of them in charge of the world, bring out vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. He brought out vestments for them. Jehu and Jonadab, the son of Rechab, went into the temple. That's a friend. This man told him, come and see my zeal for the Lord. But the manifestation of that zeal was a controversial thing. But he still followed it. He said, this is the place I never thought I was going to come. The temple of Baal. But you are there. He went with it. He knew that this man is up to something didn't pull back at the first discomfort. He didn't pull back at the first irritation. They went to the temple of Baal and he said to the worshippers of Baal, search and seek no servants of the Lord are with you, but only the worshippers of Baal. They went in to offer the sacrifice and bond office. Now Joe had appointed for himself 80 men on the outside. If you are with me, when I commit an assignment to your hand, you do it diligently. He appointed 80 men. And he said to them, if any of the men that I have brought into your hand, you didn't catch them, I brought them into your hand. If they escape, whoever let him escape, it shall be his life or the life of the other. They say, ah, 
What a commander. And they didn't say, Jehu is a wicked leader. They only rose up to the challenge. When the commandment is increased, don't be angry with the commander or the commandment. Trust God for grace to fulfill it. His, grace, his, his commandments are not grievous. Are you following me, church? If anyone of them escaped, so those people stood outside. And you know what? Give me the next verse. So it happened that he had made an end of offering the bonds offering. So the truth of the matter is that Jehu even offered bond offering. To so some people, Jehu, the revival, the revival is frustrated. He missed it. He, it, it was a patient process. Jehu said to the guard of the cabin, go in and kill them. Let not one come out. They kill them with the edge of the sword. The proof of Jehonadab as a friend was because he could go through with Jehu in controversy. The proof of the appointed men with Jehu, with Jehu was that they held his command as their assignment. We have the people today who second guess every word and every commandment and every instruction. We are living in an age where you trust nobody. Even the people who have laid down their life for you. It's not a divine virtue. It's the spirit of the enemy. Praise God. Who is willing here? If you are for me, are you ready? If you are so minded, are you ready to obey the word? If you are so minded, are you ready to throw down Jezebel? If you are so minded, are you ready to take alive the people I want you to take alive and remove the people I want you to remove? If you are so minded, are you ready to give me your hands and make your hands dirty? If you are so minded to be our friend, our partner, are you ready to end time to the days of controversies with me? You're not going to disappear at the first instance of crisis. Second Corinthians chapter eight, from verse eight. I speak not by commandment, but I'm testing the sincerity of your love. Love is not worth it if it's not sincere. A lot of people that thought they entered into marriages discovered they entered into deceptions. And what happened? the whole atmosphere changed what makes love valid is not his feeling it's his sincerity I'm testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others look at it, yes for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich yet for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty that through his poverty might become rich and in this I give advice it is for your advantage only to be doing what you began and you are desiring to do a year ago what they had the desire to do something what but now you must complete the doing of it the word will prove that that desire is a true desire is what is a completion of it how many of you have said, if God had done this for me, this is what I would have done? The hour has come. Or else, you have only uttered with your mouth what is not in your heart. If you had a desire a year ago, you must also complete the doing of it. That as there was readiness of desire to desire it, so there must be a completion of of what you have tell your neighbor say as you have readiness of desire now desire is cheap who wants the gospel to be preached all over the world do you preach it do you preach it pastor should have written book 
We should have written five books. What will you do about it? As there was readiness of desire, there must be what? Completion. For if there is first a willing mind, if it is accepted to what one asks, not according to what one does not have. Yes? Next verse, next verse. I do not mean that others should be eased and you should be burdened. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack and that the abundance may supply your lack and there may be equality. Verse 15 as it is written. He will gather much, add nothing left over and he will gather little, add no lack. You had a readiness of mind. Make sure there is a completion. Most of us are obedient people in our mind. That's why I told you in the beginning of the service that to get to a house and you read you are welcome does not mean you have entered. You are welcome is telling you you can come in but it's not telling you you have come in. You must take step to cross over the Rubicon so that what is said can become what is practiced. Are applicable. Are you with me? Second Corinthians nine five to nine. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time to prepare your generous gift before us which you have previously promised that you may be ready as a matter of generosity not of grudging obligation everything you are doing as either of these two sources is that you are being forced to do it or you are really willing to do it and it is the proof of actions that determines what is working for I say to you, he who sows sparingly, we also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully, we also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity. Don't become a fast responder now because you have had a sermon and just try to make your assuage your feelings. I want you to move beyond your feeling. I want you to get to willing, not just feeling. Be willing, not grudgingly of necessity, but for God loves what a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, having all so that you having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Verse 9. He has disposed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. I want to see you give with joy in your mouth, in your face. I want to say, I want because it's, you you are. It is not grudging; it is willing. There is something called a free will offering in the Old Testament, because and it is a valid New Testament practice. Nobody forced you. You just looked and said, ah. "Is this country going to change?" One of my sons there has been challenging me. He said, he said, Pastor, we must move forward. He said, I've decided, I'm trusting God that I must give my first million before this year ends. You know, somebody will say, I must hand my first million. That guy, I shot an arrow beyond the number. Because you can't give what you don't have. You don't get it. Give it. I don't want to be here. I want to be here. I got a shiny bush of convenience. Five, five thousand, five, five thousand. Let's give five, five thousand. I'm looking for ten million. Then let's give five, five thousand. Calculate how many years. Eh? Let it occur to you too. Can it occur to you that God can help you that you can give one million? 
did it occur to you? Those are the things I want God to. He said, because I want you to move away from. I am thinking. I know God. I know I love you. You know God. They said the kingdom of God will grow. Yes, it will grow by who? I thought you, you missed a good place. I said by who? Oh, the gospel will be preached. We will disciple people. By who? By me. Oh, that choir is not. They, they, there's nobody that has tenor. Since you know what tenor is. Because some of us don't even know. It takes time before they, they say this auto. I say, hey, which am I blend? But you can see that. Ah, the soprano is low. Since you know, by who? By who? I am not. You are not talking. <laughs> by me, eating lolly. That by me is going down. Philippians 4 from verse 10. Are you blessed? But I rejoice in the Lord. Paul was writing to the Philippian church. That now at your last, at last, your care for me has flourished again. Though you see you though you surely did care, but you what? Now, how many of you believe that you are bigger than this? That is only opportunity you lack. God will begin to give opportunity. Amen. Some of you believe you are epitome of love. And you can do anything for people. How many of you discover that when you are seated at home, you are thinking about yourself, you are very good? Have you noticed you are very good? Anybody that is my friend is blessed. I'm so selfless. You know when you are thinking that, about that, you are only taking the decision. The opportunity has not come. Don't worry. Now, that is why there are people needed, needy around you. Do you know what God is saying? I want to connect that desire with opportunity so that you can prove that you really have it. He said, you claim you, you had the care, but you lack the opportunity. Yes? Not as I speak in regard to need. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. There are things we say, not because we want to say, but because we will be, we will be, dis, we will be untrue to you if we don't tell you. Not because we need it. You know, one of the things I don't like talking about most is people giving. But let me tell you, I'll be untrue to you. And I will leave you where you are if you don't have a heart that can give to God. I'm telling you the truth. Something about you will play too. If you don't have a heart that can be extended for others, I will be untrue to you. I like to live my life in private and not talk about to anybody. I just there is nobody here. I say it with all boldness that can say I have ever called him because I had I wanted to pay my child's school fees. If you have ever happened, raise your hand. I don't talk to you about. I'm not talking about need. I'm not talking about need here. I'm talking about growth. Are you following me? Because me, I've learned to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I've learned it. Yes? You have jumped past the thing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know that the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again. Because many a times, what proves that you are committed to something is doing it over and over. 
You see, commitment is not a once and for all thing. I told you before that when you marry, two things you will always do till Jesus comes when you marry. You will be giving, you will be forgiving. You will be giving, you will be forgiving. See, Jesus comes. That's the only way your marriage will work. Yeah. And I told you. Say amen. Some of you, the last time you gave money to your wife was when you were toasting her. That's the last time. That's a wicked spirit. That's the last time. I show you. No, show you. Suddenly you just change. You remember you used to smile. Everything she does, you smile. But now, manage I show you. You said a hey, once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I've received an abound and I'm full. I've been received from a prophetical the things from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And my God, that's where we go to. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. My Christ Jesus. Verse 20. Now to God and Father be glory forever. I decided to read that long to just show you. This man said, You know, you are willing, but you lack the opportunity. Then opportunity came. You know, see, when people are willing, they are always looking for opportunity. Have you discovered? He said, I want to bless this man. Then you go, Please, when is his birthday? They say, It has passed. Say, ah. Then you say, when, it is, when is his wedding anniversary? He said, ah, It's next year, January. Okay, what's his wife's? You know what you are looking for? Because there's readiness of art. You would have asked five questions. There will be something that will click because of readiness of art. Who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. On the Lord's side, will you help me say it? I am on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. And the Lord is on my side. As long as I live, as long as I breathe. Lord's side, will you help me say it? I am on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. And the Lord is on my side. As long as I live, as long as I breathe, I am on the Lord's side. Now, the Bible says, The Lord your God is holy. So it said, You must be holy as the Lord your God is holy. That's how you prove to Him. You can't tell Him. In, in Yoruba culture, when they want to steer a demon against somebody, they will go and give the demon what he does not want. They will take what's that? Day? A day? They will take it to the the stone of Satan and say, "It is this." boy that says I should come and give you what you don't like to eat say, he, this, see, see, that's how he hates you and because the devils are blind and wicked they will go and fight the person but our God is not like that but when you honor somebody you bring to him what he desires 
So who is on the Lord's side? I want to hear you. are words of transformation. Look at Exodus chapter 32 verse 25 to 30. Exodus 32 verse 25 to 30. Moses was coming down from the mountain and the people of Israel were dancing around a golden calf. When Moses saw that the people were all restrained for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies, Moses stood in the camp of in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves to him. Don't just think in your mind you are on the Lord's side. It will determine where you are, who you are with, where you go. Are we together? You can't be equally yoked with a non-believer and be on the Lord's side. Then he said to them, Thus says the Lord, Let every man put his sword on his side. Go in out and out from the entrance to entrance throughout the camp. Let every man kill his brother. Every man is companion. Every man is neighbor. And the sons of Levi did it according to the word of Moses. About 3,000 men of the people fell that day. And Moses said, Consecrate yourself today that the Lord may bestow you a blessing for every man that supports his son and his brother. Do you understand? See consecration. They oppose their own sons. How many of you are on the Lord's side? If the Lord said I prepared a light place for you, but your hand will not allow you to get there, the Bible says you cut it, which means you will love him more than yourself. You can't be so self absorbed and love God. And I know you love God. How many of us love God? The proof of desire. Is pursuit. The proof of desire is pursuit. Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after 
to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty I have desired, desired it and I'm seeking after it you are going to say father I receive corresponding hearts for the desires that you have put in my heart for your name in the name of Jesus Christ raise your voice and pray this morning pray this morning pray this morning one thing have I desired and that's what I'm seeking after some of you are saying I love the way pastors preaching now you need to begin to seek after you need to begin to stay in the world you need to begin to study you need to begin to go pray that's what that's the proof of that desire the proof of desire is pursuit him when you love him you will stay in his presence the proof of desire is pursuit some of us say you know anything he tells me to do i will do and you have clear instructions both from the lord and from your leadership the proof of desire is pursuit one thing have i desired that will i seek after I will seek after it. Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus, we receive the capacity of pursuit. Pursuit. In Jesus' name we pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. The Bible says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may be prophesied how many of you desire a deepened spiritual experience you are not going to desire it alone you are going to pursue it yeah we good together you are going to say god i want you to use me to bless people the, the reason why i said you may prophesy is because prophecy edifies others who wants God to use him to bless other men? Say, Father, I have the desire. Give me grace to pursue it. Make me a blessing to men in the name of Jesus. Raise your voice and pray. You are not praying. Make your, pers- your desire your pursuit. Pursuit. The Lord of desire is proven by pursuit. That's the rule. And except you compete by that rule, you are disqualified. You will have it. You will be crowned. In Jesus name finally John 15 14 and 15 John 15 14 and 15 you are my friends if you do whatever I command you you are not my friends because you farms with me you are not my friends because people see you with me you are my friend because you do that's Jesus speaking to the apostles. You do whatever I command you. I do not call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. For I call you friend. For all things I have heard from my father have made known to you. And if you are my friend, what do you do with what I have made known to you? You do it. You know, I want you to say finally to God. Anything you tell me to do, I am willing to do it. I just want to be obedient. Nothing must be too big nothing must be too great nothing must be too high that i cannot release to you time in things you are my friend when you do whatever i command you whatever 
When you are seated in a bus and I tell you witness to that person and you witness, that's how you prove the friendship. You are my friend. When I begin to tell you it's time for you to pray more and you begin to organize your time to make sure you create space for that prayer. That's why you, I know you're my friend. You are my friend. When you do whatever I command you to do. You're my friend. When I tell you you are drawing back in, in worship and you begin to hasten your worship and get deeper. That's how you're my friend. You're my friend. Lord, this house is full of your friends. This is the house of your friends. This is the house of your people. This is the house of your people who have decided to be willing to do all your will. You are my friend. I have made a place for you in my house. A room for you in my heart. In my relationship. You know, I even talk to my fears about you. And I tell my fans that whatsoever you want, whatsoever you say, that's what we will do. I've told them that you are a welcome personality in my house. That's what I've said. I've said to all my friends that you are my friends. All my friends know you. They know you. They know I'm crazy about you. They know I'm willing about you. They know I love you. They know I love you. I talk to them. I don't go to work and I'm silent about you. Everybody that knows me knows you. You are praise, yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh, this worship is for you. Yahweh, see the lifting of my holy hand. It's unto you, it's unto you. You are praising Yahweh. Yahweh, this worship is for you. Oh Lord, Yahweh, see the lifting of my holy hand. It's unto you, it's unto you. Oh Lord. You are praised, you are praised.
Our speeches are guarded from our hearts. Our thoughts and our meditations are accepted before the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Joints, afflictions with joints are being visited this morning. Joints. In the body, pains are the joints. Mara bokoshi da baha, mara da ba kaboko de kedo wakedia. Lord, let the power of God go through this congregation. Let there be healings. Joints be loosed. Stiff joints be loosed. Painful joints be healed now in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of the God of heaven fall upon your people. We receive testimonies, testimonies, testimonies now. Stretch that joint, stretch that joint. Do with it what you can't do before. Do with it what you can't do before. It's all over this place, healings are happening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Rabo Kosharabakaya. Lift the end. If you can't lift it before, if there are pains about it before, lift it. Lift it out part of your body. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. How many of you are grateful to God for this morning? 